Welcome back to Time Out with the Sports Doctor podcast, where life, sports, and medicine intersect. We're very glad that you continue to support this podcast. You can get the information on any platform uh, where podcasts are played, as well as getting the video content on YouTube. But if you want to just get one place to find all the content, go to my website at drgarrickthesportsdoctor.com and you will find everything on that website. So without further ado, let's get into this episode. So welcome back to another episode of Time Out with the Sports Doctor. And we have a repeat guest here for you today. Hey, we I'm have uh, Mr. Edward Jones. Uh, he is the authority in player development. You know, he is definitely a pioneer. I don't think it's any short talk to say he is a pioneer in player development. Uh, he's an author. He's a fellow podcaster, a Beyond the Field podcast. Um, just welcome to the show again. Glad to have your wealth of knowledge here. And we are just chopping it up on some uh, yeah. current events before we got started here. But welcome to the show. Yeah. yeah, we were chopping it up on current events, man. It's just like, it's just, I don't know, man. You just don't poke bears. And uh, apparently <laughs> some people like poking bears. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, you know, last time you were on, it was May of 22. I looked it up. It was episode mm-hmm. 55. I'm now yeah. like episode 125 plus, which Come is on, let's go. kind of crazy go. To, to think about. And yeah. when I first met you from the Get Paid with Podcasting community, shout out to Coach Jonathan Jones. Hey, uh, Double know. J. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Not my cousin, yeah. but we got the same last name. Right, yeah. At first I was like, they family. but <laughs> that's, his, that's his little brother. <laughs> But yeah, so it's amazing to see the progression and the just progress that you've made over the last almost year and a half, because I believe when I met you, you were just coming off the Houston job, right? Baylor. Just Baylor, Baylor job. Okay. Yeah, just you were Baylor, coming off yeah. the Baylor job and it was like, okay, been doing player development, you know, Kansas, Houston, Baylor, boom, boom, boom. Where's my next stop going to be? Not necessarily in a panic mode, but what's my next thing going to be now it's like i doubt you're even looking at a job for a college now you are you know from employee to entrepreneur to like consultant and Uh now you really built this platform so it's been amazing to watch the just progression of your your story and i'm glad to be a part of it Uh, first of all i appreciate you saying that uh i think the big thing for me is like uh i was at a point where i didn't know and now i'm at a point where i had three universities hit me up in the last two months and i'm like i'm good because i like what i'm doing i'm able since i met you you know, I went from starting a podcast and in that time, so it's been almost a year, yeah, a little over a year. Yeah. Started a podcast. Um, this is tonight I'll record my 90s episode. So I'm almost to 100. I've uh, written another book, taught two courses on player development and held a virtual player development conference, the first of its kind. And so uh, I just I'm inspired by people like yourself because y'all are just go getters. You know, you get in a group. They always say surround yourself around people getting things done. It wasn't a right. group of like. Oh, you know, well, this person starts a podcast and us kind of like, oh, I did five episodes. Somebody should be sponsored. It was us all getting it and like collectively. And, and like, I can't say this enough for you all. And I have an episode, uh, one of my podcasts for you all. And even Jonathan, just y'all came at the right time. Like I was just kind of doubting my skills because, you know, I unfortunately I got let go for pretty much no reason at all. Had nothing to do with my skill set or how I did the job. It was more preference and politics, the double P's and college mm-hmm. athletics. And I just needed a group of people to believe in me and y'all did. And so it's great to see where we all are, you know, um, what you've been able to do in your career. And I've learned from you and so many other in that group. But like you said, I'm in a point right now where like the podcast is starting to become a business, uh, starting the reach has been incredible, you know, and I'm just at a point where, like you said, the consulting, I'm reaching out to schools and writing letters. I'm at a place where I just want to help people. And it feels good. You know, Uh, I know Jonathan always talks to us about this This is the empowering place where I can choose what I want to do. Right. Um, you know, there are b- major benefits to working in college football, as you can see. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, but there are some things like right now I get to spend a lot of time with my family and consulting. I could do it. You know, oh, you all that need consulting and player development. I can do it in person <laughs> and I can do it virtually. Uh, but yeah, consulting allows for a lot of more freedom. And man, I'm excited. Like I'm about to start a digital courses where people can do self pace. So, man, we're going we're going to the next level, man. I, I just I love this topic. I got so much stuff. Every time I get asked a question, it's content. Every time a player unfortunately does something, it's content. Every time a coach does something like 
say something crazy <laughs> about another coach and you got to be in that position to make sure players, how the players feel because players come into your office like, man, I can't believe he said that. So, uh, yeah, so there's always something, man, that just kind of keeps me going. So I feel like I'm still in the role, but I've serviced way more people than I uh, serviced before. So, yeah. So first you mentioned a backdrop. Just give us a quick, you know, yeah. explanation of that backdrop and what that means to you. Yeah. So this is um, really for me, like if so, let me start off my story. As a kid, I was a sports kid. Like my family's real estate. My dad was a broker. Uh, my mom sold houses like out and it was like there were things I was good at, but I just love sports. I was a junkie. I used to read the Houston Chronicle, read all the stats, all the transactions. Uh, my dad would bring me in. Uh, he would say, you know, hey, Ed, what were Michael Jordan's stats in 1988? And I literally just could just like I memorized all the basketball cards I had. But if I need to find those, I probably can make a million dollars. But anyway, <laughs> this is like the dream I had growing up. So right here, I've got all the credentials and just things for last 15 years. Uh, there's some more in a box, as you can see behind me. Uh, got University of Houston, uh, my high school, got a whole bunch of books, you know, pictures when I first started coaching right there. When I spoke the NFL NCAA Coaches Academy, which is awesome, uh, my Big 12 championship ring is up there, uh, which is that's from Baylor. Cool. Yeah, 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 yeah. Let me, let me. I gotta grab it, man. It's, it's <laughs> let me just get this box. Uh, I've got my time at Kansas, my time at my alma mater, some more books and stuff. But it's just, uh, and I've been blessed. Up top are some bowl uh, footballs, and then my book right there is coming out soon on Amazon. Let's go, let's yep, go. Yep. Uh, and then this beauty right here, uh, always wanted a ring. You know, my late father always told me if I want a ring, it'd be his. So Boom. you see this Big 12 championship ring right there. That's a beauty. If you're not on YouTube, yeah. you're missing out. <laughs> you're missing out. Absolutely. So uh, the backdrop to me is special. It reminds me of what I've done. But you know, as it is, man, like a lot of times there's people that call it social proof. Uh, but it shows people like for me, it's I've said all this stuff. And I still think there is a, how do I say this? And I'm not mad at anybody. I understand it. I'm talking all this stuff about player development, but I'm not in a player development role. Right. Right. And so, but I'm a big believer. You can't teach what you don't know. You just can't like, not for this long. Like people can fake it, but you can't go this long. And so for me, this is like social proof. Like I've done it. It's behind me. There it is. Right. So I'm not just some guy that uh, is doing it. Cause unfortunately, you know, this doctor, like Dr. D, Dr. Derek, that, you know, with content, there's a lot of people that are just creating content and it's like, mm -hmm. oh, this sounds good. But I'm like, look, I got situations like, you know, right. that's one thing I do in my course is I walk my students through like real life situations. They're like, wait, that happened. I'm like, yes. So anyway, backdrop means a lot to me. There's still some other stuff I'm unearthing. I have an entire like tub from when I coached. It's a lot of crazy stuff. So it'll probably be more detail there. You have your Bo Jackson jersey. I think I'm going to get mine. Well, I don't think I have my cousin's jersey. I'm going to put it back there. So. And then I'm going to paint this, too. I like uh, I want another color. But anyway, yeah. So the backdrop just represents what I wanted to happen. And I'm very thankful to God that I've had these opportunities. Like sometimes I just sit back and I'm just like, wow. Like, yeah. I've been this, you know, so. Yeah. And you mentioned social proof. Uh, but at the same time, you know your experiences. You know that you're one of the pioneers, like I said, of player development. But talk about how the difference of knowing, OK, I have this experience. I know that I have the credentials. I know that I'm qualified, but still the leap that you have to make because you know that in your heart, I know what I'm doing, but right. you have to make, do these imperfect steps, right? Yeah. Starting a podcast, writing a book, doing a, a seminar or an in-person or a virtual course. Talk about how that's still a leap and how that's still, you know, how imposter syndrome can still creep up, even though you know I got what it takes it's been an incredible journey. Like even, you know, when I started the podcast, Jonathan was like, bro, you know, so many people, so many people respect you. Yeah. And you know, this from podcasting, you can't see, it's not like LinkedIn where you get profile views and you can see the 40 people that looked at your podcast or the hundred people that looked at this one or the 600 that looked at this one or the thousand that looked at that one. And so you show up not knowing who the, the crowd is. Right? right. And even though I did the role, I didn't know if people wanted to listen to me because like, I just, here I am making a podcast. I just got let go. And I can't find a player development job. And as time went on, like even with the conference, I was like, man, can I really put this on? Like, but people kept talking to me about it. And I was like, you know what? I got to do it. And I even had a call with someone last week um, at a university, a Division One university. He's like, I used to do these monthly calls when I was at uh, Kansas and Baylor. 
and I've I've dropped the monthly causes. I'm like, why why would I like I'm not in the role? And he's like, and he told me straight up, he said, Ed, you're the only one that connects everybody. Everybody knows you. You connect. So even getting past that, like, what can how can I serve them? But I can serve them. I could bring everybody together. It gives me an opportunity to show what I can do and also gives me an opportunity to stay on the current events. So if someone's right. talking about NIL, I can come up with the plan that I would use or I could say, hey, we use this at Kansas or Houston, Baylor, or wherever. It still is tough, man. It's tough, like, because as I get to episode 100, it's like, wow, you know, like you just wonder, right? Like, it's like, man, will I ever get a shot in the role? Like, do people really, truly care? Um, but every time I feel like that, I get that one message because it is a leap of faith. Like tonight, I'm about to record about I got a fresh face. So I got to record about 16 feet. <laughs> well, um, the line is fresh. You already know, know, man. That fresh face, man. <laughs> fresh face. You got three days. I got it Wednesday. I got this day and tomorrow. My wife's birthday is tomorrow. So I just already took an energy drink. I'll probably be up to 3 or 4 a.m. Uh, but anyway, um, going back to your question, it's, it's a leap. Like when I talk about stuff, are people going to listen? Like when I talk about my experience at Baylor, like I, I have to be real. Like it wasn't a great experience, you know? Are people from Baylor going to be mad? It really doesn't matter, but I want to help people. The biggest thing for me is being authentic. And you know, the more mm-hmm. authentic you are, the more you step out, Connection. the more vulnerable you are, the more you step out and you don't know what the reaction is. You don't know if people are going to respond a certain way. And so every day, you know, like I'm about to start doing workshops. Will people want to sign up for workshops? I send proposals to school. Do they want to bring me in? Will they pay me? You know this, like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and I got to the point where I'm like, look, the, the price is the price. And I'm finding out they will pay. Like right. they will, because it's that, but it takes a while to get there. It really does. And one thing I had an executive coach, thankfully my last place I worked at got, got me an executive coach. And I told her, I said, I don't like talking about myself. I want to help people in that. And she told me, she's like, you have to provide people value and you just tell them the value you provide and so but even today one one director always asks me questions and i i appreciate him asking me questions and i was just like you know what let me reach out and let him know that i, I want to create a customized experience where i can answer all his questions you don't have to answer ask a question once a month let's do this i could come up there let's pay to make this service and we can hop on once a week whatever it may be so um but it is like once even saying that is a leap of faith like even right now i'm yeah. tackling like Will he pay? You know what I'm saying? Right. Will his school pay? So it, it's every step towards lack of a better word, greatness is a step of vulnerability, is a step where you just don't know. You literally are like like let's say like the Indiana Jones, right? You you're one step, you take a step, you just hope something's there as you go. So it's all faith, man. So still learning. Yeah, it's learning. been the same thing for me as well. And you know, we've been able to see each other grow, but you mentioned like you don't know if people are gonna care. And at least once or twice a month, probably once a week, I'm sitting up here asking, how much longer am I going to do this? Does it still matter? Is it still relevant? You know, is it going to get me wherever the destination is going to be? Because I don't really know what the destination is. But I know that the more that I show up and the more that I get behind the microphone, the more people I'm connecting with, I'm connecting with people. We didn't know each other right through the podcast. We might have never known each other. But every time I interview someone, they're saying, oh, man, you got to talk to this person. And it just continues to take you on a different path. And, you know, like you mentioned, you'll get that one person to say, oh, that was a good episode. I'm like, wow, you listen to the podcast? I had no clue you even listened to the podcast. So or somebody will reach out and ask you a question or reach out and say, wow, just keep going, keep doing what you're doing. And that social proof and the validation helps to keep going, even though you don't really know where you're going or you think you might know the path, but you really don't uh, because there's no way you could really have predicted two years ago that you would be sitting where you are. And it's the same thing for me. I don't know if I ever really saw beyond a hundred episodes and you know, have you seen, we've seen people, they say seven to 10 episodes and it goes from every week to every month to Are they still having a podcast? You know, you yeah. see people just kind of fall along the wayside. And for those that just kind of keep chugging along, things open up. So for somebody out there just trying to figure out if you should keep going, consistency is key, I feel, to figuring out yourself and figuring out kind of the game. Because it's, it's a game that we're being taught and learning and it's still evolving, just like player development, just like NIL. A lot of this stuff is in its infancy. And every week it changes. So you just got to stay tuned in. I love what you said. Like, so, and maybe you've experienced this. There's like certain ones I record and I'm like, ah, I didn't feel too strong about that one. Or I'll record yeah. one. I'm like, hey, that, that one was a banger. 
And the ones I don't feel too strong about, I'll get two or three messages on LinkedIn like, yo, that was an awesome episode. I was like, you like that? Like, and then, or people will go back. Like one of the craziest things, like you mentioned this, and this is the biggest thing I learned from you and others, because we're in a group and nothing against anybody in the group, but you do see that seven episodes. Mm-hmm. You see the, the enthusiasm at the beginning and then you just start seeing the more and more you got to show up, people, you know, it just, it it's life, right? But like the more and more you show up, like for instance, I literally have a student in my course right now who was up late night. Cause I remember Jonathan was saying, and I watched some other videos too, Think Media, like putting up YouTube. They say YouTube is the greatest search engine and people just sit up and search all day. And so this young lady was like, she worked in like, she's certified in counseling, but she was like, how can I like impact athletes and then not be necessarily like a clinical, like not red tape, but you know what I'm saying? Like right. not necessarily yeah. a certificate yeah. sense, right? Using the certificate she does have, education and the experience she does have, but in a looser way, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. And she was like, she typed in, somebody was like, oh, player development. And she goes on YouTube and she literally texts me. She said, I just saw your face. And she's like, I just, <laughs> I, I watch shorts and I watch, cause you just don't know, man. You don't yeah. know. And now she's in the course. And now I'm connecting her with somebody I know, which never reminds me, I need to do my homework. I'm connecting her with someone I know next week in the space that works in the NFL. She's like, I've been trying to meet her. I was like, that's my homegirl. Like, you know what I'm saying? That's the homie. So I'll connect you. And so like, just stuff like that, man, you, you just never know. You never know, you know, Dr. Derek, like being an example, like how many young black men are looking at, correct me if I'm wrong. I know you're a surgeon. Is it orthopedic? Orthopedic surgeon. Yep. Let's go. I, I knew it. Let's go. Come on. Come on. And like how many are looking and then they look, find you and then find out, wait, he does other stuff too. Like, and I think that's the big thing I want to show people. Like, for instance, like they'll see this and then I'll be on Instagram and I'll be cooking or I got a red yeah. by it, which I got to record tonight. Or I got like this. And it's just like, there's so much like just that you're so much more than just your role. And I really appreciate that with you. Cause I'm just like, man, I could imagine being an orthopedic surgeon and doing anything outside of that. But people need to see that. You never know. Yeah. And so uh, it's one of those things where consistency helps because I we I can, I can look at all these videos. Right. And people could talk about thumbnails. They could talk about video link. They could talk about this equipment. They could talk about this. But the people who have success, they just show up. They just show up. They show up. And that's all that matters. Like there's no science to thumbnails like this thumbnail is trash, but it's got a million views or this title mm-hmm. is bad. but It's got this. And it's just showing up. And what's happening for me personally is the you know the shorts have been great like they've got like 179 extra s- subscribers but people are starting to ask about player development because players do this stuff and they're like man who's developing players so they type in player development and they see this <laughs> I, can't call it, I can't call it a crest smile but you know uh, they see this but it's just uh you know oh to what you said like consistency anybody that's listening to this in whatever field you're in and like consistency creates so much like i remember People would say that you learn so much by teaching when I was a teacher and when I was a coach. It's the same. I learned so much from podcasts. I learned so much from listening to other podcasts. I learned so much from being on this podcast. There's probably stuff we're going to talk about today that I'm going to be like, you know what? Let me record an episode about that. So, yeah. Yeah. And, you know, when I first joined, so I had Jonathan was my second coach. But mm-hmm. I remember when I first saw Get Paid with Podcasting. And I was like, uh, you know, do I want to be affiliated? Because it's not to me about a money thing. But I was thinking, get paid money. But as I started to go along, get paid was so much more than money, right? Right. Get paid is relationships, meeting you. Get paid is, you know, you make this connection with people who introduce you to someone else. Or get paid is you learn something, pick up a wealth of knowledge from your guest. I feel like every time I interview somebody, I, I learn something. Or I read a book or they tell me about a book or, you know, the value of a podcast, the value of connecting with people is so much more than a dollar amount. It's so much more than having a sponsor, so much more than, you know, getting a a paycheck in the mail for a speaking engagement or whatever. The wealth that you obtain from consistency showing up, I feel like it translates not only to my job, to my family, to my life. It's more than just money. So right. what, is, what do you feel like getting paid from podcasting? What does that mean to you? If you're enjoying this episode, don't wait to the end to share it. Share it now. Share this with a friend or a colleague that you think might find value in this information. And then also make sure that you click and leave us a five-star review and give us feedback because we really value your feedback and your input. 
Now back to the episode. I mean, it just opens doors, right? Like you yep. mentioned it, like access. Everything that I got paid with from podcasting, in a sense, I haven't got paid for podcasting, but I have got paid from podcasting. That makes sense. So since I was podcasting, I decided, you know what? I'm going to do this series on head coach's guide to player development. Well, I was like, well, if I'm going to do a series, let me write a book. And I was like, you know, I want to talk about player development. Well, if I'm going to talk about player development, let me do a conference. Hey, I'm going to do this. Well, if I'm going to talk about this, let me make workshops. So it's almost getting paid in like, like you brought it up. Number one, social capital. So you mm-hmm. meet people like you got a lot of people that reach out. People, I mean, I get random like, man, I connect with somebody from Australia. Right. Like, hey, this is I saw your podcast, you know, because yeah. I think sometimes we forget how big the world is. Right. Like right. how much bigger it is. So you get social capital. You get I would call it intellectual capital. Like you're learning, you're thinking about things. I'm thinking about all right, what, what should my next series be? Oh, that'd be a good book or that'd be a good deal. You're getting, you know, communication capital because you're learning how to communicate. You're getting better at communicating, better at facilitating. Right. Because, you know, man, my first episode, like I remember, like I used to. Jonathan makes me laugh. Like I go back and look at my first episode. It was trash. (laughs) Uh, But it's because I'm literally like reading. I'm like, hey, thank you so much for joining the player development pod. My name is Ed Jones. II. (laughs) I am the founder of the Beyond the Field program. And then to be like, it's just, it's track, but I did it. Like I started. And so you, start. you get better. Yeah. You get better at facilitation. I've got better at, it is going to sound crazy, but like, I don't want to call it interior design, but like being thoughtful and like artsy. Right. And like, mm-hmm. what do I have behind me? What do I wear? Making thumbnails. Like I'm like a graphic designer now, you know, it's just like, I want, well, I want graphic designers. Let me not. <laughs> say, so don't job. dumb it down. Yeah. Let me, there. let me, yeah. Let me not say all that, but I, I have made graphics. And so, you get paid in skill. There it is. You're getting paid. I'm getting paid in skills. And like now, have I made money from podcasts? Absolutely. Shout out to Jonathan Jones. I'd have made about some north of 15,000 just showing up. And it's going to continue because like now you have to your point. Yeah, it's more than I didn't do it like, all right, I'm going to do this and I'm going to get paid. It was more like right. my heart's mission and all that. But now I will get paid because like people are like, oh, what, how, what do you know about this? And you send them a proposal and they go down your rabbit hole of like, hey, can you talk to our team about that? Or can you talk to my head coach about that? And so, yeah. So like, but the skill payment is just, man, it's been great. The transferable skills I've learned from podcasts and have helped me just in so much, man. Yeah. So tell people, you know, player development, just give them a quick blurb about what it is and how you're impacting player development from the outside looking in now. Yeah, so player development, this is how I define it, everybody. Now, player development, it looks so different. So let's break down what I'm talking about. I am talking about the off-the-field development of players. So if you play baseball and you hear player development, you're thinking of pitching development, batting development. If you play basketball, you may have a player development coach who's helping you with shooting, defense, different things like that. In football, a player development could be like a strength development in a weight room. I am talking about the development of the be- person, human being, outside of the sport. And so let's get that out the way, right? Uh, I define it as the enhancement of the student athlete or the athlete experience through holistic and intentional programming and initiatives. So for me, I have three pillars, personal wellness, community impact, and career development. So the thing we used to tell recruits is like, well, like I would talk to coaches, they're like, what do we say when we're in a mother's house? Number one, personal wellness, we're going to take care of his son. Number two, community impact, he's going to take care of the community. And number three, career development, we're going to take care of him whenever his career is done so he can have that. So you're taking care of this person in so many ways, them themselves, how they help people and how they help those who will be under them and the generational impact that they can make later. Generational impact is my life's purpose. And so uh, in that, in the role I spent, uh, we talked about it. No, it was right here. There we go. Uh, <laughs> it's opposite. Three years at the University of Houston. Three years at the uh, two years at University of Kansas and then one year at Baylor. You all saw the ring and I was able to just enhance and be a part of players lives. I still get kind of like yeah, yesterday, literally yesterday, I was at uh, Sport and KC, which is a soccer team here in Kansas City. And I got to see one of my former players who's doing a great job there. And like it's just stuff like that. You're helping athletes see that. Yeah, you are. You play football, but you're not a football player. Right. There's so much more to that. And so. Mm-hmm. That's player development. If anybody's interested and wants to learn more, hit me up. I know we'll talk about that later, but I am just passionate about developing players. And then the reason why I'm passionate about it is because I fell into that. Like you talked about the identity stuff and like my, my career ended a lot 
earlier than I wanted it to. It ended after high school. I had an opportunity to play uh, smaller football, but I wanted to go to University of Houston because going back to what I told you, I wanted to, I love sports. And they were the only school that had a sports management program that literally listed out what I was studying. And so my football career ended early. And it's interesting when you look at these scholarship players in football, the, the two things that stand out in football very easily when you look at a football field is size and speed. Right. And so if you're a big kid or you're very fast in football, you are identified early, very early on. This could be little league, middle school, and even some cases high school as you are going to make it. That could be a scholarship. That could be the NFL. So your whole identity is like, I have to make it. Mm. And you miss out on all this. You miss out. Like people are telling you to work on football when you like playing with Yu-Gi-Oh cards or Pokemon cards. And people are telling you, hey, go out there and work out when you like gaming or when you like, you know, you're playing with uh, what's the uh, the doctor thing where you used to buzz. Maybe you want to be on surgery. surgery. Uh, yeah. <laughs> operation. You're there, operation. Yeah. Operation. You're sitting there playing with operation and you got people to hey, have you worked on? Have you and ran? Have you worked out? Have you done your push ups? Which is there's nothing wrong with that. But it's like, what have you passed? And so whenever I talk to players, I always say I would say, you know, what professional would you want to shadow for a day? And so they would say, well, my degree is in. I said, I didn't ask you that. I said, what profession would you want to shadow for a day? And so do you start getting, well, you know, entrepreneur. One guy was like, I want to shadow a body shop. I want to have my own body shop. So it's like, all right, let's 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 figure it out. So it's one of those things like that's what I do. That's player development to me is enhancing this experience. Now, I want you to be the best player on the field. Like you're here for a reason. Now, let's not forget right. that you are good at football and you do have a scholarship. You're here to be a student and an athlete. Uh, and you need to take care of those two things. But as, as you're taking care of those things, we want to take care of you and, and help you see that you're so much greater than the role that you're in right now. Yeah. More than an athlete. Athletes are powerful. They have platforms that yes. many of them don't even know the power of the Correct. platform. You know, I've seen in the state of Mississippi a flag change because of the actions of an athlete. Absolutely. You know, been yeah. Years and years and years and probably would have continued to be years. But an athlete stepped up and money started to you know yeah. hey we're pulling out we're pulling out we're pulling out and wow within a week look what happened so athletes yeah. are powerful i want you to hear that uh, you're more than an athlete you are yeah. a person you are a human being and no matter after the sport you still are the person that you were before the sport and Absolutely. sometimes you just got to figure out who you are outside off the field or off the court and that's what Right. Uh, Brother Ed is here to help you with. So look out now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so he, he he can clean up coach's mess too. So we'll see you after Saturday. You might be your phone might be ringing. I'm Man, sorry Lord, for I, what I said. <laughs> yeah, you have to get your team back, Coach. I got you. I know how to get them back. It's gonna cost yeah. you a pretty penny though. <laughs> All right, man. Well, on time out with the sports doctor. This is your final time out. So, you know. I told you this was unscripted because I knew yeah. I just wanted to catch up with you and I knew it would be great conversation. Uh, but, you know, for someone who's listening now, they say, wow, Ed Jones, he's, you know, one of the pioneers. So, of course, he had a head start in the field and that's why he was able to write programs and books. But there's no need for me right now. So speak to the fact of, you know, no matter how many podcasts or how many books, there's always room for more new knowledge, new voices. So why should people still you know, start a podcast, write a book, write a program, things of that nature. It's because like there is someone else who has an interest in what you do. And so what I mean by that, this is like player development is very niche down. So I actually joined a group and we're, it's kind of preparing us for creating online courses. And I said, hey, my name is Ed Jones. I do player development. This is what player development is. Somebody literally in the comments is like that is a niche niche. <laughs> and yeah, you know, like the big thing, I get the emails that say, hey, let's work on your SEO. You know, let's get to 100,000 subscribers. I know there's not 100,000 people who care about player development. Maybe there are, yeah. but that's not my target. My target is to help whoever is interested in this and passionate about this. They need resources. Why? Because in 2016, when I was hired at the University of Houston, I had nowhere to go. I'm sitting in the office and I had to figure it out. And for two and a half years, I figured it out, but I always think about, man, if I would have had a head start, if I would have got, man, like if I would have had some resources to work with, I, I felt I built good relationships. So that's, I'm always relational, but like how much impact could I ha have had if I would have had some resources to start? So whoever's listening, like that is my calling to you, like, or my, I, I'm a coach now, you'll give me a halftime speech. <laughs> um, but 
like my calling up yeah, to you is whatever you're interested in, there's somebody that needs a start. It may be five years from now. It may be a kid on a playground right now that will have the same exact passion you have or somewhere near it. And they'll see a book and their parents will think they're crazy. Their teachers will think they're crazy. And they'll say, I want to do this. And if you got a podcast with a hundred sub episodes or you have a book or you have a blog or you have a newsletter that talks about this. You never know. What I am finding out is this. There are a lot of students in sports management programs that want to get in player development because player development is growing. And I'm biased, but I think it's the number one growing position outside of NIL because NIL is going to cap at some point as far as mm -hmm. positions because mm -hmm. everybody's going to figure it out. Player development, there's something new every day because people you're dealing with people and, and there's a lot of different people, a lot of different personalities. And so what I'm finding out is a lot of students are going back like you have more stuff and they're literally saying they did not teach me this at my university they did not teach me this we never talked about player development so whoever's listening to this i don't care if it's underwater basket weaving i don't <laughs> care if you want to talk about how to paint a wall i don't care if you want to talk about putting decals on a helmet because I, I am absolutely trash at putting decals on helmets whatever it is like whatever your passion is somebody wants to hear it people sign there's conventions if you saw a list of the, i've seen conventions for it's the smallest things like marketing conventions what conventions about signs the vertical signs like they literally have a convention about that so i just want to say whatever it is like don't think that nobody wants to hear it you will be shocked at who wants to hear it and it may not don't i'll say this do not go in thinking hey i'm gonna get a hundred thousand subscribers I, you, you probably won't. Right now, I'm at 272 subscribers on the YouTube channel, and that kind of shocked me. I'm not going to lie to you. I thought we'd probably like you know get to 100, 150 people that care. But once again, it's not about that. It is I am getting the message out. And when I get a message that someone tells me that what I've done is helped them, when I get a message from a young man who says, I got a position to be the student athlete development coordinator at this school, and a lot of that has to do with what you learn. When I get a message from somebody that was at the conference who literally was looking for a player development position and now is creating an entire player development department for the entire university that he's right. at. And he says, that's because you did that. That's what you need. I love this quote. If anybody watched coach Carter, you know, our, our greatest fear is that we're stronger, be, we're strong beyond our measure. And at the end of the quote, it says who your downplaying, your small playing of who you are doesn't benefit the world. So Whatever it is, write that book. It doesn't matter. Write it. Like, just like I told, like me and me and Dr. Derek talked about it. My first podcast was absolute. The first <laughs> seven are trash, absolutely trash. But it helped me get to this point right now. And so, you know, people still like, hey, I, I love the first episodes. Like those are my most, it's the crazy thing is those are trash. Those are my most watched or most listened to podcast episodes, which is wild. But uh, yeah, so go out there, do it. Somebody... I'm telling you, somebody do it. This with the expanse of the internet, people are benefiting on niche, 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 niche topics. And so yeah. I want to tell people, I, like, I kid you not, like I look at this mic, right? And you may like love these chords. These, hey, I, I want it like I, this chord to help your mic talk about it. Somebody's listening. So no, nah, you're right. It doesn't matter how small or how minute you think it is. Somebody like you mentioned, they're going to Google, they're going to YouTube. I do it all the time. How do you put on this ankle brace? How do you do whatever? Yeah. So you never know. Some of those how-to how yeah. videos have hundreds and thousands of views just because you, that's what people are searching for. I'm looking at that Bo Jackson jersey back there, and I'm thinking like, man, like it'd be sweet to learn how to like put a jersey in a frame. Like, How do people do that? Right. And you type in YouTube and somebody is literally teaching people how to put jerseys in a frame. But guess what? Guess what's always going to be worn to the end of time? Jerseys. And what are people right. going to want to do? Hang jerseys up. Yeah. And they're not talking right. about how the jersey was made or Nike versus Under Armour. They are literally talking about framing jerseys. And I, I'm going to look at I'm going to look it up after this. And that's my homework to you all listening. Go look up a jersey framing video and look at how many hundreds of thousands of views it gets. And we're talking about super niche. So, yeah. Right. <laughs> but, hey, man, tell people how they can follow you on social media, how they can connect with you. Yeah, absolutely. So my bank account number, if you want to make it down. <laughs> All right. So, buy uh, coffee for the podcast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, the cash app is no. Uh, so. All, all my social medias are BTF underscore program. So beyond the field, BTF underscore program. 
uh, very active on LinkedIn, Instagram, Threads. That that's something new. Uh, TikTok. Yeah. It's all BTF X. underscore program. <laughs> yeah, yeah. X is so weird. So yeah, that's where you can find me. And you know, let me know what you want to hear. I'm uh, if there's anything anybody's like have a question about, I do a question of the week. I do a tip of the week. So you get from me. Every week you get four resources. You get a blog, you get a podcast episode, you get a question of the week, you get a tip of the week. So if you have any tips you want to know about or questions, please help me out because uh, the, the well can run dry at times. So, yeah, that's where you can find me, BTF yeah. underscore program. And that's just the free stuff. You can always pay for a little knowledge. Come as well. on, man. I, I will, <laughs> man. If the this is what I've learned. If the free stuff is that good, the pay stuff has to be better gotta be better come on now come on now y'all go to the mall y'all know what's up if that sample is that good then i know that two meat two side combo is about to bang you feel me (laughs) well man i appreciate catching up with you ed and you know great success in your future and i i'm looking forward to the ride can continue to grow together so I appreciate, I appreciate you, man. Yeah, you crushing, right, man. Appreciate you. All right. Thank you for continuing to support this podcast. If you enjoyed this episode, then please leave a five star review. And if you haven't done so, subscribe so you continue to get the updated episodes. Until later, peace. Hey, time out with the sports doc. Keep our head right in the game. We ain't never stopping. You are now tuned in. Trust, you don't want to miss. This is where life, sports, and medicine is.